I guess I can start. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Emiko. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And I am very honored to be part of uh, this event to celebrate Chinese Lunar New Year. Um, so today, I want to talk about how to find uh, inner creative voices within, within yourself, within you. And before I begin the talk, I did um, a little practice this morning. <laughs> I have a slideshow coming up soon. I'm going to ask Bruno to show it up very soon. But as I was practicing, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Bruno. I was practicing and I was reading. I don't have any press. I, don't, I didn't prepare speech or anything, but I was practicing. And I realized one question, the biggest question that I didn't get to address during this presentation is, what is creativity really? What is creative in a voice? What does it sound like? What, it, what does it feel like within you? And without answering that question, I didn't think I could start this presentation. So I'm just gonna begin. Um, I'm gonna begin just answering that question because it's really important. I don't know what creativity is really. Sorry, the noise, it's a bit noisy. I don't know what really creativity is. It's difficult to describe it words because it's not something that words can really describe and capture the essence of it. But I can tell you what creativity is not. What creativity is not is the productivity. A lot of people think, including myself, uh, think that when you're creative, you become productive, you can produce more, you can make more stuff. But I think that's a false uh, description of creativity. So what I'm gonna talk about creativity in general here is, is not that. So I can't tell you how to be productive and make lots of work. Is it really noisy, Bruno? The background noise? It's okay. We can hear a little bit, but I think it's it's okay. I'm just going to ask everyone if there's it's a little bit too noisy. You can just try to adjust your volume. But to me, at least okay. on my end, I think it's okay. Okay, there is some construction going on. My studio is in Chinatown. There's always some noise. Uh, so anyway, let's begin. So my name is Emiko Benlet. I am a painter, and I am a self-claimed poet and a dreamer in heart. Okay, next slide, please. So this is about me. I was born and raised in Japan, surrounded by the sea and mountains. And I am now living in, in North Vancouver, again, uh, North Vancouver, Canada, if you're not from Canada. Um, again, surrounded by mountains and seas. Um, so my connection to art, how I became an artist is a very interesting path. I, when I was five years old, I decided that I wanted to be a painter. And I was, I was, always a, I was a kid that was always drawing all the time and painting all the time with the little paints I had, crayons or whatsoever. And, um, but my dream disappeared when I was 14, when, I got uh, severely criticized by an art teacher in my school, and I decided never to touch a paint or never to dream how to be, a, uh, never to dream becoming a painter again. But anyway, I think all through my life, um, I always remember having this connection to my grandmother and my mother, who are not. Uh, artists, painters, or anything like that, but they are very avid crafters. My mom and my grandma, they would always make stuff out of nothing. Uh, they were very good cooks. Uh, they would cook something, ferment food. And uh, so I always remember seeing them making things. And I never participated in making anything with them but I always remember just seeing them cook and make stuff that has um, left me a huge motivation, I think, to, 
to, to, to, to do the same thing, to make something, to create something out of something that's not so beautiful into something beautiful. So what uh, my current work is really about honoring those memories. And when I paint, I paint memories. And when I do still life, um, I have a still life setting today, but I rarely paint from an actual still life setting. I create a still life setting in my imagination from all the collected memories and from all the collected uh, patterns and colors that store it in my head or in my sketchbook. And as you can hear, read here, I am a poet and storyteller, and that's who I am. And I tell stories through painting and poems. Thank you. And uh, the next slide, please. So let's get to it. <clears throat> Finding your creative inner voice within. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this topic is because this topic is really dear to my heart. I've been searching and searching, searching my inner creative voice for the longest time I can remember. And, and, I, and I think I want to talk about this because a lot of times, because, especially because nowadays there's so much information out there, just a click away on your computer, and nowadays phone, you can scroll, scroll down, you can find all kinds of art. Accessibility to all kinds of art is amazing, but at the same time, it, it makes your brain, it makes your creativity clouded, you know, with all the images. Um, so what I wanna talk about is actually, instead of looking outside, let's look inside what's in you, um, that gives you that, that spark of creativity, that joy of being creative. And I believe anyone can find that because I could do it and I believe you can do it. And uh, I actually should have put those um, two things uh, in a different order. I want to start with start before you are ready. And that journaling comes later. And I will, I will kind of Tell you how I did my journaling to find my creative inner voice, inner creative voice. So start before you're ready. This is crucial because we wait too long to start anything these days. And the, the, the thing that's so important to me to remember is you're never ready. You will be never be ready enough to do something. So once an idea hits, if it's accessible, start. That's really important. When it comes to making art, uh, drawing, painting, there's so many online courses right now. And especially because of pandemic, um, a lot of people, a lot of artists, a lot of universities, colleges, um, online course content creators, they are really giving their effort to create online courses so go check it out um i think you always find something that inspires you to try so that's a really good resource to go to and another thing i want you to remember is that there is no art police so there's no right or wrong you can <clears throat> draw still life you can start with abstract art just don't listen to what other people say or do Dive in and focus on what you love. That's the third step of start before you're ready. Really focus and find what you love. It doesn't have to be something that is grand or big. Uh, mine really was, I love books. I love looking at books. I love smelling of an old vintage books. So I just set up a still life setting, I remember, and a stack of books, and I started throwing. And, and I could start that or collect old books and just smell it and feel it. And then that usually sparks, ignites something in me. So how to find what you love, uh, how to find what speaks to you, speaks to your heart, how to find what your heart uh, calls to, cause you to do is by 
journaling. Um, I started journaling a couple of years ago and um, it can be a daunting process if you're not used to it. And I was never used to it. So in the beginning, it was really hard for me to do it. But you start writing whatever comes in your head and you can, you can do it in the morning or before you go to bed, just find a sentence or two, write it down. It's usually helpful. During the day, you can carry a little notebook, write down the words that spoke to you or write down the thoughts that excited you or write down the thought that made you sad. And that usually relates to your past and your memories. Now, important thing about journaling is definitely when you start writing, a past memories, sad memories, even uh, trauma might come up. If you deal with deep trauma, I did that. I, I had deep trauma, so I had to go to see a therapist, and I really encouraged you to do so. You're not alone to deal with it, but it's really important to acknowledge that there are parts of you that, um, that you want to hide, and but it's okay to have those memories and past and just write it down in a journal and then embrace them. And embracing doesn't come naturally within us. It almost feels like it's a, a guilty feeling to embrace the past because you always want to fix something. But um, instead of, um, let's say, instead of um, placing labels or at a tag, this is what happened. I think journaling helps you to see this is what happened as fact. There's nothing more. Write it down and just let it go. So another way to, to journal is to collect images. I often cut out from magazines and just put it all in my sketchbook because that's just fun. You gotta do something fun. You know, journaling is really tough and hard and dark. You gotta do something fun. So find uh, what you have fun with collecting images, going through magazines, going to the library, find what you love, read, collect. That's a good place to start. Now, got a little too long. Let's move on to the next slide. <laughs> so this is where I wasn't sure if I could share, if I wanted to share. Um, but I thought it would be important and I don't mind being intimate with, uh, with my viewers. I've walked all the walks. I've had lots of different past experiences, but I ended up being an artist, a painter that I wanted to be when I was, since when I was five years old. So if you look at the image that I put, uh, not the words, but the, oh, the, qu the quilt um, images, I often see my painting and my life as a collection of bored images, memories, past, and, and I see them beautiful. I see, now I can see my past, my memories, all these images that I have, stories are beautiful because I made tapestry, I made a quilt with them. In each individual piece, uh, if you're a quilter, you know they come in different sizes and different patterns and colors, materials and textures are all different. If you look at each one of them, it tells you a lot of stories. If you put them all together, then that's a whole different story. So if you see all the labels that I, that I had before, I still carry them with me. Um, I'm sure some of you have gone through some of it. Um, some of you maybe have gone through more than what I had gone through. But I want to say that um, those experiences, you can make beautiful quilt work with it if you decide to use those past memories. But the important thing that I want you to remember is that, it's a reminder for me too, is that you're not the quilt, you're not the artwork, you are the creator of the quilt, you're the creator of the quilt and the artwork. So you're stepping aside from your story. You're looking at your story, reading your story as they are. 
Next slide, please. Um, so this is another way to, um, to, I wouldn't say to find your inner creative voices, but I did this uh, in inspiration board and vision board. Nowadays, it's very popular. I think it's easy to find information about how to create these boards on the internet. I did this work a couple years ago when I, was, when I took uh, an online course uh, to create abstract work. And it was very helpful. It was amazing. But what I loved about that course was actually this part, is <laughs> making inspiration board and vision board. And uh, they're practically the same, but they're a bit different. Inspiration board uh, is basically for my work, for my artwork. Vision board was for me, uh, for, for, for who I want to be in five years or 10 years from now. So it's a little bit broader spectrum uh, than inspiration board for me. Um, what's on it is important, but what's more important to compare those two vision board and uh, inspiration board for me, and maybe for you too, if you make ones, is that can you tell how similar the taste and the feel and the texture of those two balls are? I, I didn't, I try not to, I, I didn't mean to make the same kind of boards, but as I was working through making those two boards and afterwards, I looked at them and the first thing that just stood out most for me was that, gosh, they're so similar. They're like the same. They have the same texture, the image, the colors. It's just so me. It's just so me. And I realized I can't escape from being me. No matter what I do, where I go, who I'm with, this is me. Me emanates, me just coming out. And it's not in a selfish way. It is more like this is the creative me that just wants to come out expressing myself. Um, so before that, all these past experiences, I wanted to hide. I want those ex past experiences um, wanted to go away. I didn't want to acknowledge. I didn't want to embrace those past because they're not nice, you know, they're not beautiful. But when I saw those two boards two years ago, when I made those boards and I see all the similarities between those two, I realized I can't hide. Even if I try to hide, they're there. So why not? embrace them why not even strengthen and embrace who i am in the core and be more me and create something from that space next slide please now i mentioned that there are um well, in this slideshow i said i mentioned there are gems in your past i didn't talk about that yet um but it is important that we are, we have lots of past uh, stories to tell, but we can't get bogged down in our stories. Because once you get bogged down in the stories, you become that quilt, you become the artwork. You're not the artwork. You are the creator of the quilt. You're the creator, the patchworker of all your past memories. You're the artist. You're the creator. So. Um, always start from a blank page. You can create anything. You can be anything you want. Now, that, again, that doesn't mean that you produce a lot more. It's just that that creative voice really is about you allow yourself to be who you really are um, and how to find it. It's always within you. That notion of the notion that knowing that where you can find that voice is always within you, that notion is so powerful and that makes you a creator. That makes you, that gives you the creative, that's where the uh, creative, in, the creative voice is. So don't get bogged down in a story. It's just, they're just stories. Write your own story with your memories and then you create something beautiful, 
meaningful, wonderful, and sad, and, and it's something that you will love, I think. Okay, next slide. So, I am very honored to be known as a Slevin Still Life series painter. I have created more than 30, uh, 40 lemon still life so far uh, since the pandemic started. And a lot of people start to know me as, oh, you're the lemon lady. And I am so honored to be known like that. But anyway, uh, so I'm gonna just show you how painting lemons, the still life, uh, help me grow as an artist. Next slide, please. So it was during the, it was just, the, it was the beginning of the pandemic when it started and we got all locked up in early 2020. I felt I was actually pretty lost and I was stuck in a small home studio with two uh, busy boys who need to be homeschooled. And more than that, I felt the lack of my creativity. I didn't know what to create. I didn't know if I wanted to create. I just didn't know what to do. And that's usually, that's, that's when actually I left my mentor. I was working with a mentor. Uh, I left her uh, because I, I, it was something that inside me just, I, I just needed to get um, my own work rather than working through her work and with her. But anyway, so I thought during the pandemic, I thought, okay, this might be the sign. I had been always wanted to try oil painting and I have all the knowledge. Uh, I have watched all kinds of YouTubes about oil paintings. I've taken all kinds of oil painting online courses, but I actually never had tried. So I thought, this might be an opportunity. I'm just going to try. Even I was scared. So I gave it a go and just deep. Uh, I went deep in it. And next slide, please. So I began and that changed everything. Before I was ready, I began. I mean, I was ready because I had, I had four years of collecting for the knowledge, but I wasn't ready. And um, I was so scared of failing, of not uh, making it perfect. But I began and, and that really changed everything. Okay, next slide, please. <clears throat> so slowly and surely, I found inspiration in my own surroundings and in a world. The more I painted, the more I realized that the resources, the sources are all inside me. During that time, I did not look and scroll through Instagram at all. I just painted away from within. When I did that, um, again, like I said, I embraced what happened in my past. I embraced who I was and who I am and who I will be. Um, one of the, let's see, it's not in here, but um, I love, I love vintage things. I love antique. I love vases. I love colors. I love flowers. Um, and when I was painting, I realized that those are the things that really speak to me and it spark, it really spark, they really spark joy. And the reason is because this is where I went back to my old memory. I used to grow up in this really, really old Japanese house with my grandmother and grandfather and my parents. And it was nothing beautiful in that house. It was chaotic, old, dirty, smelly. And I didn't want to invite my friends over to my house ever. And nobody came to my house. It was that bad. <laughs> so there's nothing that I would feel proud of. Uh, there's, you know, there's no art on the wall. There's nothing artsy about my past in my, you know, in that old house. But then again, I 
realized that uh, my grandma used to collect old jerseys and old clothes, like vintage, really beautiful clothes, and they she would hide it in her closet somewhere, and I always go find those <laughs> gems, and I still remember that feeling and memories of finding those beautiful things in the absence of beauty in a house. So in a way, yes, my past has nothing to do with art, but, be, but the absence of beauty now is teaching me how I appreciate my own term of, uh, of beauty. What is beautiful to me? What is joyful to me? Um, so this lemon series had taught me so much about my past and how to embrace the part that I wasn't proud of. So I went on painting more and more and more lemons. And I call them a lemon series. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, maybe you can read it later. Uh, this was, I was curated by an uh, online uh, curator who, um, who did an online catalog and it's called Curated Taste Under 50. Under, I can't remember the name, sorry. Uh, I got an interview from her and um, there are some of the writings that I did. And I don't know if you can get the slide after the talk. It's a long writing, so I'm not gonna read it right now, but uh, maybe I can just pinpoint some of the things that, um, that speaks out to me. Uh, so this, this lemon series, this painting, uh, the curator thought that, that, she, that it reminds her of a Japanese woodcut, traditional Japanese woodcuts. Now, she didn't know that I was from Japan, actually, but she saw that element in my painting, and I thought it was so neat that, like I said, even though I try to hide who I am, where I'm from, my background, it just comes through. And instead of hiding it, I just emphasize, uh, I just make it larger. I make it clear that, that uh, this is what I do. And so that's a great example that, that, you know, just be more you actually helps you become more creative uh, or recognize that inner voice within you, that you are the creator um, of your work. Next slide, please. Oh, did it freeze? Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, I got, to, uh, I get, to, people ask me a lot, why lemon? What's, what's up with lemon? And uh, I love answering that question because lemons, it's not, lemons are, uh, if you can read it, um, it's lemon at that time when I was creating the series, it's, it was a representation of what my life was all about uh, during the pandemic and probably goes on. Um, it's never, it's never, uh, lemons are so bitter in the skin and sour inside and misshaped and have different faces from different angles. It comes from different vision of the world. And, but then you can make so much out of it. You know, you can use the zest of it. You can make jam out of it. It can, you can preserve it. Uh, you can make lemonade out of it if you mix with honey and it's refreshing and it's invigorating. So, you know, life gives me, life gives me so many different aspects and so many different perspectives. And lemon kind of presents um, the wholeness of, of life. And lemons are just so much fun to paint. So I, I just enjoy answering the question because every time I answer a new, every time I answer the, this question, why lemon, different answer pops up in my head. Okay, next, please. Is it important to live with art? Yes, uh, because we're all creative being, I believe. Living with art, in any type of art, it doesn't have to be painting it. I think cooking is a piece, it's cooking is art, uh, writing is art, everything is art. Even your daily, you know, 
nine to five job can be an art. Having art around you uh, remind you always that you are the creative thing. You can create your own world. You can create your own life, and uh, it stirs your emotions. And when your when your emotions are stirred in that in in that way, um, something inside it just wants to be born and wants to create, be creative. So that was. Um, I also like that question. And I want you to think about this question uh, today throughout the day. Is it important to live with art? Is it important to be creative in your life? Okay, next slide, please. Okay, anyway, I've talked enough, I think. This is my contact. Uh, if you want to see more work of mine, you go, can go to Instagram at Emiko Bennett. Uh, and I also have a website, www.emikobennett.com. And my email is hello at emikobennett.com. I love to hear from you. I love discussing this kind of stuff and go deeper into creativity about creativity and about life and lemons. Okay, I think it's time to do the demo. Can you give me the next slide? Sorry, the last slide. Sorry, Bruno. Technicalities. Anyway. Zoom. Okay, <laughs> just, just give me a second. Yeah, I will. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Here and now it just sums up what uh, I'm going to do. Okay. Here we go. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to do a quick demo. That's okay. Um, it is a life, uh, it's a line painting. It's not drawing. It's more like line painting because I will be using uh, actual paint. It's it very... Um, I wouldn't say easy, it's just, it's fun to do. So if you have any paints, it can be acrylic, watercolor. I'll be using um, gouache today. Uh, but if you can, if you have acrylic, if you have oil, you can use any of it. And then you probably need a jar of water, brushes in different sizes and shapes. And uh, I will use a, uh, a lid from a jar, from a jam jar as a uh, palette today and paper and compassion for yourself that's a very important ingredient for making a painting okay so let's begin i'll do very quick i kind of did this earlier so this is the kind of painting i will be showing you how to do um, this is the still life setting I did, and I'm going to walk you through how I see things and how I see things and how I interpret what I see into lines. And I say Matisse like because Matisse uh, distort the, uh, the, in his painting, uh, the perspective is a little bit off and and then he uses bold uh, lines like this. And I love it because it's, it's kind of primitive. It's bold, it's simple, and yet it tells you so much. And it tells you so much, so many stories. So let's begin. Oh, by the way, there's no apple in here, but when I drew this, it looked like an apple shape, so I had to draw an apple. <laughs> okay, so. Now I get the paint into my palette, just like this. And today, because it's a big uh, piece of paper, I'm using watercolor paper. It's pretty thick, 300 uh, pounds good paper, but you can use any paper, any size. Um, make sure you dab a lot of water. So you don't run out of uh, water and it's kind of nice and smooth. Okay. And when I paint, when I see uh, still light, when I paint, 
I don't do realistic, too realistic. You can go as realistic as you want, but I just want to look, I would just want to um, show you how I see things. And sometimes a lot of people don't know when they do still life. They don't know where to start. And there's actually no rule where to start. You can start anywhere you want. But today, um, a little tip that I can give you is that why don't you start with an object that grabs your attention first? So for me today, um, let's check the time. Okay, I'll go really quick. For me, this orange really grabs my attention. I think it's because it's in the middle. So I'm gonna start that orange as sort of like a, a starting point and I'm gonna move my way around it. Now, when I paint, when I draw, when I see things, I don't see that as an orange. I know I'm painting an orange, but I try not to see, I, don't, I try not to label an object with a name. So all I see is the line of that object. So, and when I see things, when I draw, I don't, look at what I'm drawing, what I'm painting. I only look at what I, all the lines of that object. So if you look at me, I'm not taking my eyes off from that object. I don't know if you can see me. Okay, here we go. So let's see. There's that shape. I'm still keeping my eyes on an object. Dabbing the paint a little bit. And there's that little top, just really cute. Right? And I don't stay in one object too long. And I'm going to move on to the next one, which is the next thing. That's right behind this orange. Okay. And what's forgiving about line painting is that, as you see, I made a little mistake, but it doesn't matter. You can just continue. Whereas if you do it with pencil, you just want to erase it, right? As if you erase your past or stories. Don't. This is part of the painting. This is part of your story. So let's begin the top. And it has a little line, the little wrinkles. It's pretty cute. Now, maybe I'm just going to move right onto this vase. Now, again, I call it a vase, but I only see the line. I only see the outline of it and just continue, keep looking. And you don't have to pay attention to the details just yet. All you want to do is to see things as they are. The easiest way to see things as they are is to really follow the line. So the gargoyles I bought, those flowers, a lot of petals, and it seems intimidating because there's so many details and so much to, you know, draw. But again, for me, it is, it's just lines. So I go like that. I go outline. And keep my eyes on an object. Right? Detail comes later. Let's get the drawing. Let's get the lines keep moving. This is almost like um, you're not losing the momentum. Once you start to pay attention to the detail, you lose the momentum. And momentum is so important when it comes to um, painting. Sometimes it's okay to stop, of course. It's to, sometimes I kind of draw and then go behind, go, go way back and then see how everything is working. So I'm just going to do this, I'm just going to do that. Okay. And it's totally okay that your object is kind of out of the paper. That makes actually painting more interesting when, when not everything is in a piece of paper, but something is off the grid. So what I notice, what I really like about this flower is that, I don't know if you can see, 
but this bit, the shape of the stem, it's so cute. So I'm gonna exaggerate this shape of stem. So I am going to draw the stem like that, right? And it's nothing, it's not a correct representation of what it is, but that's the fun part, that's the fun thing about being a painter. You can change your story. You can change into the way that it pleases your eyes. Why not, right? So, again, I'm not really paying attention to the details of this drawing. And like this middle part, it's a nice dark, kind of gives you an accent point. Okay, and maybe I draw a petal or two here just to make it look like there are flowers. And I love the little handles of the base, so I will draw that. Now, I will keep this just blank because I might want to add different patterns on the base later, right? So I'm going to move on to, oh, okay, we don't have a lot of time, so I'll go really quick. Maybe I don't finish it. Maybe I go, instead of drawing, uh, instead of painting the books, because it takes time, it might take time, I'm just going to draw one more orange here, right, and then I'll let it get the little freckles here, and a little wrinkles again here too, like that. And again, you don't have to paint everything on the table. Like I put that, I put those scissors, but I decide now, nah, I don't feel it today, so I'm not gonna draw it. But I do draw those. Uh, plants because it kind of gives me a nice streamline here to draw your eyes from the side into the center. And again, let's see, I'm going to use this part of uh, a brush to quickly have that a shape of these instead of drawing each in one of the leaf. There you go. This is fun because there's that freedom. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not worried about the outcome. Usually when you're worried about the outcome, it kills the creative voice inside you. The creative voice inside you just wants you to keep going. It stops thinking, analyze later, be in the moment, and that's what I'm doing. Okay, and the last step will be I just love the line of this little cloth that I put, so I'm gonna add that too. And that again, that gives you that interesting uh, lines to draw your attention right in the center. I started here, so I want all your attention right in the middle. So I'm kind of drawing it <laughs> using all oh, this. I'm gonna go quick. I want to finish this demo soon. Okay. So another tip is make sure that you dab a lot of water. You see me keep doing this so that so the brush runs smooth. It's nothing annoying than a brush that doesn't go smooth. Okay, and then the final step will be. Uh, where that eye sits. Oops. It kind of went like that, but that's okay. Very forgiving. Thanks. Right? Okay. And the last step. Because I wanted to add something on here. On the base. Let's see. Maybe I'll draw some different flowers. I have tulips on the other side of the table. So I can add tulips. Some patterns that I like, like this. There you go. 
lifestyle, like uh, still life drawing. Simple. It took me only 10 minutes. It's a great practice to get your hands moving and your mind is your heart is moving. And um, yeah, if you have spare 10 minutes a day, set it up and then enjoy drawing. Okay. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I did. Oops. Thank you very much. That was okay. that was delightful. <laughs> I want that painting. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, so I, once again, I believe I mentioned this at the beginning. So you can feel free to use the chat room. So you can just type your questions. I will post the questions for you as well. Or if you want to unmute yourselves, you can just raise my hand and then I'll just. Unmute you or can you unmute yourselves and pose a question directly to to Emiko as well. Okay. We do have here a few questions. First of all, I'm just going to read um, a comment. I don't know if Miret wants to um, unmute herself, uh, but I, I can I can always just just uh, do it. She mm -hmm. actually Miret mentions that um, this is makes her very happy. So the painting. Mm -hmm makes her very happy and i think it's it's something that's very you know, recognizable about your work kind of makes us happy so colorful and beautiful so i just mm -hmm. wanted to voice that as well myra also okay. mentions that um it's delightful and it's very cool as well while you were um, doing your live demo so thank you myra thank you oh, okay. once again <laughs> Um, and here I have a, a few questions. So the first of all actually okay. asks for future plans. Do you have uh, anything in your horizon, a new series, something that you would like to share with yeah. us? Yes. Uh, so I'm now working on a new series uh, called Striped Vase Series. I love vase. I love painting vases. So uh, it's hopefully it's coming along, uh, coming up soon. Um, it's just a mini series, a couple paintings, uh, five or six of them, and I will post them on all on Instagram. And uh, a future event that I'll be joining is a, a group show. Uh, the venue is decided. Uh, we don't know exactly when, but it's going to be sometime mid, uh, uh, late later March. And uh, I want you to check out uh, Tas Vancouver, T A S Vancouver the art shop at Vancouver. Uh, they're the curator of the show. And uh, so those are two uh, things that might be happening very soon. Thank you very much. Uh, so the next question here comes from Angel. So Angel's saying, uh, you have mentioned that you get quite asked very often about why lemons and you always come up yeah. with a new answer. So am yes. I able to, am I allowed to ask why lemons? Yeah, yes, of course. It is, I don't know why, but I always come up with new answers. Yes, I think when I paint, I don't think so much, right? So I don't analyze why lemon. But when I'm out of that uh, painting session and I'm actually speaking to people, uh, that's when my mind works, why lemons? And why lemons? Yes, again, right now, I, I'm still, it's, they're not lemon series. They're not called lemon series anymore, but I do add uh, lemons in my painting still. Uh, the right now, why lemons? It's because it's the color. It's the yellow that, I love yellow. It's the color that unites somehow all the elements in the painting. Uh, hold on. I can show you. So this is one of those series that uh, we're working on here at Lemons. It's somehow, it's the shape, it's the color that unites all the elements. And I just love it. And I feel, I feel like that's um, what we want in life, right? Something that is so core of your being that whatever happens outside, you're okay. <laughs> so again, that's a new answer. I never answered. I never came up with that answer before. Um, so I think that kind of represents of um, how I want to feel in life, you know, that core, the lemon's my core, and, and everything else will, is okay as long as we have that lemon. Did I answer that question okay? 
Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you did. And actually, that was a new <laughs> answer. So that's yeah. Yes, that that's a new answer. Proves what you've said before for sure. Yes, thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> so I got your. Uh, so one more question. Uh, mm -hmm. It comes from someone who's not watching the 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 live today, but I I promise yep. I would ask the question. So the question is: yes. um, Is nature a very big source of inspiration and one of the reasons why you moved to Vancouver? Mm -hmm. um, I think I always feel better uh, when I'm around nature. In nature, I think we all kind of are, even if you live in the city. You crave something that is so organic. It is important to live by nature. Now, uh, I, I was asked this question before, and so I always think about nature and my painting and my creative career all together. For me, I'm not a landscape painter, although I could be. You know, I live in Deep Gulf, North Vancouver. It's a beautiful area, literally surrounded by sea and the mountains. And if I step out outside my house, there are trees, mountains, and five-minute walk to the beach. Um, and then I was asked, why don't you paint landscape? And maybe someday, but not at this moment, because nature right now is a reminder for me that I am a part of a bigger picture. When you're surrounded by nature, it's so vast, so big, that you are reminded that you're just a tiny part of the whole thing so it's a good reminder for me to not get worried about tiny little things and this process everything is a, is about process uh, being in this process is what we are living for because we're always a part of a big picture and so that way i go in nature to be to really stay present uh, to re to let myself to allow myself to remind myself again and again that that it is a process i'm part of the process i'm part of a big picture so relax enjoy life and do what you love to do it's important to live by nature yes <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I next question comes from Lorraine. So Lorraine, if you want to unmute yourself. Emiko, thank you so much for that Hi. inspiring and informative talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that I have this, maybe I can try to get my daughter to recreate something for me. Oh. <laughs> so um, you know, I find it I find it very interesting that you know you you do lemons and. Um, you know, I don't know if you know the saying goes, you know, if life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Mm -hmm. ha, ha. Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting because I was looking at your quilt and I was looking at the words and, you know, your childhood, your upbringing, and there was lots mm -hmm. of, of, of negative and, you know, yes. traumatic. I would say, I, you know, yeah. there's a lot of trauma that you had yeah. to kind of work through, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's interesting because at the first time I saw your work was through Candy and she had posted it. And the minute yeah. I saw it, it was very uplifting. And I was also going through a, a, a sort of anxiety and depression at the time, but mm -hmm. I found it mm -hmm. so uplifting. I don't know if it was the colors, but it just immediately intrigued me and captured me. And, and mm -hmm. that's why I had to approach her. Um, but, yeah. you know, I, I just wanted to know, like, is there maybe some sort of underlying uh, thing about lemons that kind of goes with the saying, maybe, with your artwork? Like, have you ever thought about that? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, again, that saying, you know, when life gives you lemon, that was just thrown at me when I was actually going through a really hard time, too. <laughs> And that was a light bulb. It's like, oh yeah, when life gives you a lemon, what would you do? You know, that got me thinking. Um, a lot of people think that my paintings are uplifting and joyful because I aim for it. And because I know my sad stories, because I know my, uh, you know, history, history of depression and uh, the disorders and all that, because I know it and I don't ignore that part anymore. So I can aim at different things, you know, but I'm not ignoring this part. This is part of me, but I can also look at different things. 
So lemon, uh, it's, I think it's a choice that I made to be joyful. So the lemon, choosing lemon was for me, choose, for me to choose what gives me joy. And I think my painting gives, you, gives people hope, memories, good memories. It's because I give, through a painting, they decided somewhere, unconsciously probably, that it's okay to choose joy over stories. And that's why uh, the, the slide today, I really wanted to talk about you're not the story, right? You have stories, yes, but you're not the story. You don't need to go down there. Because I, I used to have uh, art that are really dark because I thought art has to be really deep and dark. <laughs> but that's not it. No, you get to choose. And then that's the message of my Lemon series. See, again, new answer. Yay! <laughs> I love it. It's coming from the heart. And, and I see that. And I understand when you say you are the creator of that quilt. Don't let what's in that quilt control and dictate who you are. So you're choosing right. to, to look at the, the bright side. Right? Like, no that's right. Intended. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, secondly, no. That's, that's, I, yeah. Um, I have another question. Um, you, which yeah. part of Japan were you from? And mm -hmm. um, have you been back since? When's the last time you went back? Just curious. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm part, I'm from a part, uh, a state of prefecture, we call it prefecture called Fukui, which is near Kyoto. Um, it's, it's located by the Japan seaside. That's why, you know, sea was close to me. I went back two years ago before the pandemic. So that was, that was a blessing. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. I, I was supposed to go back last year in March when the pandemic happened. So right, yes, a lot of people had to cancel. I remember that. Yeah. No, thank yeah. you, thank you for your answer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lorraine. Uh, I have one comment here before the next question from from Wendy. Wendy is actually going back to the lemon, saying that they're actually inspiring, which which I do agree oh. with that. So thank you for joining <laughs> us today, Wendy. Um, uh, the next question here uh, comes from, from Michael. Michael is asking, what would you say today to the teacher who almost made you quit art? Almost all quit art. So they were an art student, become a teacher, or what was that question again? Oh, I'm sorry, maybe I, mm. I voiced it wrongly. So the teacher mm. who had made you almost quit art when oh. you were a child, what would you say back to that teacher today? Well, to that teacher today, you know what I would say? Oh, this nasty thing is running in my head, but I won't say that. I would say thank you still for giving me the contrast of what I wanted to become. Because sometimes when you face the contract, the things that you don't like or you don't want, it creates that it, it, it actually forces you to think what you actually want. So I think the moment when I quit, yes, that was tragedy. It so it was for a 14 year old girl. But at the same time, look where I am. I am still, I started painting again and now I call myself an artist, right? Who knew if she hadn't said what she said, would I have been still painting? Maybe, but would I have been here where I am? Maybe, maybe not. You never know. So I would just say, yeah, thank you for being the teacher she was. And thanks for giving me the contrast. Thank you. So mm -hmm. the next question here is, uh, would it be safe to say that yellow would be your favorite color although you do paint with a lot of colors. Mm. Yes, you, <laughs> it's very safe to say. It's my favorite color. If I look at my wardrobe, I notice that I have lots of yellows. I, I actually do. I surprise myself. Just like that vision board that I showed you during the slide, right? You don't know until you actually take a look at what you have and what you collect. And then you start to see all the threats, the things that you love. And uh, yes, lemon, <laughs> yellow. 
Thank you very much. Uh, mm -hmm. So the next, I have another question here. So the question is asking, is there anything in your future that you're planning mm -hmm. to do and you always wanted to do and you will be giving that the opportunity? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I, I'm going to try open water swimming in May and I'll be swimming uh, throughout the summer. And that is my, so outside my work, right? It's my, uh, I wouldn't say a goal, but I really like to try open water swimming in the sea. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so I have actually a question that I, I would like to pose you myself. Um, okay. I, I, I think your paintings, to me, they're very intuitive. I think you also mentioned that throughout your presentation. Is mm -hmm. there lots of research that you do before you paint something? You wake up in the morning and you feel like, oh, I want to place books and oranges on top or lemons on top, or is mm. just something that comes naturally to you? I think both. Uh, some, because I love, I love still life. I love painting still life. So something, because I'm gravitated towards it, there is something very natural for me to know what to do. But then I collect images. I'm a collector. <laughs> so I have sketchbook, like lots of sketchbook, full of collected images from magazines, my own pictures, my own drawings from nature here and there. And so how do I say that? I use those images, I use them as references. But what's different for me probably is that I just know how to put them all together, different elements. So that's where my imagination comes in to place to really help me paint the way I paint. Yeah. Thank you. So research, yes. In a way, it's a research. Research of, of knowing what I like of digging in why I like the things I like, and I collect them and have them near me. Yeah. That's great, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I have one, one last question here in, the, in the, the chat room, and if you do have another question, just please, you can still write it. Uh, the next question is, uh, I, and with a comment as well, I really enjoy the presentation, mm -hmm. especially the live demo. Have you ever thought about becoming an art teacher? An art teacher. Oh. <laughs> um, honestly, I don't know. I never thought of it. I don't think I'll be a good material for a teacher. <laughs> um, because I, maybe it's a fear, right? I don't have any art education, artist, art educational background. I didn't go to a university or college to study art. It's all on my own uh, research and uh, online courses studies on my own. So I feel very intimidated if I was asked to do a, a teaching. Demo, yes, because it is my thing. I can do how I ever want it. Teaching, on the other hand, that will require me to prepare a lot of things, I think. But if there's an opening, I always would like to try. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I actually have another uh, question here from, from Kristen. Kristen is asking, how okay. does your tarot card reading, if at all, blends mm -hmm. into the painting? Ooh, that's a really good question. <laughs> I, when, I ta when I do tarot reading, I use the old, um, the old tarot cards that has kind of antique images, right? And... I think I do use some of the images that I see on the tarot cards, especially when I do, uh, when I paint something on the vase, because vase, uh, it's, it's, because um, I like old uh, antique, an antique vase that comes from like centuries before, and they always have this primitive drawings, right? So I do use some of the images, I do use how they, for example, draw the moons or the sun or the people or human being. Um, but I think, yeah, so 
that's that pra practical part of it uh, of a tarot reading and then how my art and tarot cards are kind of merging it together but i think also tarot card helps me to be more intuitive trust what comes up in my in my in my heart so it lets me stay intuitive thank you very much and mm -hmm. i we don't have any more questions i will start saying okay. my goodbyes but you're still you're still uh, able to to ask any questions if you want so i just want to start by acknowledging again uh, your your amazing work uh, Emiko, thank you. Thank you for, for accepting thank our invitation. Thank you for collaborating with us. I uh, would like to wish everyone as well a happy Lunar New Year and a happy Friday and happy weekend ahead. Please join us and stay connected with, with, with the garden so we can visit our website at uh, VancouverChineseGarden.com or our social media. Also, please check Emiko's as well uh, and, and stay connected with lemons and making lemonade and just being happy thank you emiko once, yeah. once more i don't know thank if you, you want to say a few words before uh i just want to say thank you thank you thank you <laughs> thank you all again very much and thank see you, you next time thank you bye bye everyone okay. thank you bye thank you